Now that you have your machine threaded and your bobbin inserted, you are ready to sew. For this example, you'll notice that our bottom thread is red and that our top thread is black. Typically, you would use matching threads when you sew, and you're always going to want to make sure that they're also the matching weight. So you want to wind your bobbin out of the same thread that you are using for your upper part of the machine. Once you have your thread selected and everything is in place, you're next going to want to select your stitch length. On the Juki machine, it's much easier to turn your stitch dial by first pushing down the reverse lever. So when you push down your reverse lever, this allows you easier access to turning the dial. As we will learn in class, stitches at a higher number, between 4 and 5, are typically used for basting or removable stitches. Standard stitch length is usually between 2 and 3. For this example, we're going to set our stitch length at two and a half. And you can return your reverse lever back into place. Bringing your fabric to your needle, we're going to lift your presser foot up by using your knee lever. And we're going to lower your needle down into your start point. And we're using your wheel on the right side of the machine to do this. Now that you're ready to sew, you're going to begin by gently pressing your foot pedal and going a few stitches forward. To secure any stitch you do into place, you're going to use your reverse lever and pushing down with your right hand, you're going to guide your stitches backwards over the three to four stitches you've just done. Forwards and then return backwards, locking the edge of that stitch line into place. You can now move forward. On this machine, anytime you want to do a pivot or a turn, you're going to lift up with that knee lever, which essentially functions as a third hand on this machine, and you're going to turn your fabric into the direction you want to go. And you can continue to stitch. When you reach your next corner, we're going to pivot again by lifting up that foot, the presser foot. It is extremely important that when you are doing a pivot, that your needle stays in the fabric itself. If your needle is above the fabric, you are going to cause skip stitches and you are unable to pivot as you would with the needle in your fabric. You can think about this like as if you were doing a pivot turn in basketball that you always want a toe on the ground. Again, you can walk that needle right up to the point where you're doing a turn or the edge of any garment by using your presser foot by lifting up and down and allowing yourself to see exactly where your needle's going and using your wheel to walk that needle into place. We're going to show this one more time. If you wanted to finish sewing at exactly that dot, you can stop stitching just before and use that wheel to walk your needle into place. And now that we're at the end of our stitch line, we're also going to do another lock stitch, so pushing that reverse level down with our right hand and bringing our stitch a few stitches back and a few stitches forward. At this point, you can lift up your presser foot with your knee lever 
And on this machine, you're always going to want to bring your threads towards the back. If you just automatically pull your threads without lifting up the presser foot, you will not be able to release your fabric. From here, you will trim your threads and your sample is free.